It's long traded on its reputation as a world leader in animal vaccine manufacture, a vital function in a country and on a continent beset by so many potentially catastrophic diseases. But like a long list of other state-owned companies, Ondrastapuert Biological Products appears to be teetering on the brink. And that's making a lot of livestock farmers very nervous. South Africa's had a wet year so far, more rain is on the way. Everyone appreciates the rising water tables, but from the furthest outposts of the country, worrying reports of great challenges for the agricultural sector are circulating. We all know about the unseasonal rain that has fallen across the country, but the experts say this could be a factor in promoting the outbreak of deadly diseases. If we talk about certain diseases like tick-borne diseases, we've got them every year. This time of the year, February, March, April, every year in many di districts in the country. Near Lanseria in Gauteng, Dr. Dani Ordendal specializes in livestock diseases. Now that a 10-year drought is broken, he says all sorts of larvae are hatching in the ground that could cause trouble. The most feared ones, probably the mosquitoes that carry Rift Valley fever. South Africa's only had two outbreaks of Rift Valley fever in the last 50 years, in 1974 and the last in 2010. In 2010, we were not prepared, but there was not enough uptake of the vaccine at that stage. And then it hit us and it spread without us being able to stop it at all. Up to half of the lambs uh, in a flock would die. Rift Valley fever presents itself with high fever, fatigue and diarrhea, and only vaccines for animals administered in time can prevent it. Ordendal knows how deadly this can be to livestock, but more worryingly, it also infects humans. When corona broke out, many waited with bated breath for vaccines to save them from the virus. But so few people realize what a lack of animal vaccines can do to the agricultural sector. People won't believe it. We've got more than 20 different vaccines or diseases that we vaccinate for on an annual basis. Since 1908, state-owned enterprise Honestport Biological Products has had the license to produce the vital vaccines only they specialize in. But head of the National Animal Health Forum, Gerard Skitter, says OBP is battling to keep its head above water. They produce some vaccines that are very unique only to OBP. We saw over the last two years that Honest uh, de Poer did not produce enough at the right time. Vets from around the country are reporting a shortage of vital vaccines that only the OBP can distribute. Some say they've been waiting since September last year. And what affects vets affects farmers. We've been in, in a panic for the past few uh, months because we can't get any vaccines for uh, Rift Valley fever as well as blue tongue. <laughs> Understanding the plight of farmers is Dr. Florence Neherera Chakuda. After obtaining her PhD in animal nutrition and health in New York, she was a farmer before she joined the National Emergent Red Meat Producers Organization. When did you first see there was a problem? Yes, it's been, I was farming with a sheep and uh, I've tittered and struggled. She calls the shortage a national crisis. It hurts my clientele more because they don't have sufficient buffering. So if I have a head of 10, 15 animals, they lose two, that's all a big proportion of their herd. Livestock diseases can easily wipe away people's livelihoods. If disease in the countryside is not controlled, it can spread rapidly to commercial farmers. If they too can't get enough vaccines, meat exports can be crippled. Just like us, animals need vaccine passports before the controversial exports to destinations such as the Middle East can happen. In order for that ship to leave, 
they must be vaccinated. These shortages can have a major impact on international trade, but also on production. Skitta and Nerera Chikuda are part of a forum advising the Minister of Agriculture, which manages OBP, on the looming crisis. OBP sent the forum an inventory of vaccines that are available, and from what they've seen, they're not enough. Skitta says OBP's problems began when a new board was appointed in 2019. We are very worried about OBP. They're at the third acting CEO. Now you can't manage an enterprise like that. And it's a multi-million rand enterprise. And we're also worried about expertise that left uh, the organization. Treasury gave OBP nearly 500 million rands in 2014 to upgrade its vaccine plant. The department in OBP declined to comment on how the money was spent. So it's been a to and fro between government departments passing the buck and not really giving us any answers. Government is in charge of OBP and should be able to tell us how taxpayers' money is being spent. But the Department of Agriculture didn't want to comment on any queries about the vaccines and directed us to OBP. OBP gave us a short reply saying they have adequate stock. We asked numerous times for an interview and to visit the facility, but they declined this and then just blatantly ignored us. All that was left for us was to try and get into OBP ourselves. This is just the last resort. We've come to OBP to see if the facility is up and running. On the gate it says OBP is a national key point and security officers unceremoniously chased us away. We asked for a spokesperson to join us outside. Do you think we could speak to Zippo Linda? but cameras is not allowed. There's this veil of secrecy around the vaccine plant which it seems nobody can break through. The head of security finally told us to call the switchboard and speak to the CEO, which we did. Could you just supply us with pictures that you take of the facility? No, Derek, we cannot do that. We've got experts and they are questioning whether your production facility can handle the possibility of the need for millions of vaccines. And nobody can answer that question unless we can see visible proof. Derek, OBP has got the, the capacity to produce the vaccines that it, it manufactures, even in the event that it is an outbreak. The problem is we just have to take your word for it. Um, is there no way that you can give us the proof? No, no, no Derek, the proof, the, you, you have to take my word, Derek, because that's, that's what we've been doing since 19, uh, 1908. But there are suggestions that over the last uh, two years, the facilities got run down, that uh, the upgrades weren't done. Derek, in the last two years, uh, correctly so, because of the aging uh, infrastructure that we had, uh, production uh, breakdowns. The 500 million was given to OBP to upgrade the aging infrastructure. Organized agriculture argues that participation of the private sector is crucial at this stage. OBP needs the industry, and the industry needs OBP to be able to move up and go beyond the former glory. But Nerera Chikuda believes this can only happen with support from the private sector. A number of scientists have developed vaccines, but without government registration, they can't sell it. They didn't even want to be mentioned here for fear of scuppering their long-awaited registration. I visited a plant the other day that is in the process of being built in, in Pretoria. That is state of the art. And uh, I've asked the person there in charge, what will it cost? And they say 150 million rand. So that person also indicated to me, give me 500 million and I'll build you the best uh, facility in Africa. Be that as it may, if the state doesn't register private sector vaccines, these initiatives will fail.
if we can get registration process speeded up for drugs that need to be registered, that's a milestone. So we are taking it as, you know, segments. Let's achieve one, two, three, because in, for, for us, I am confident we will get there. The private sector is ready to assist in times of crisis, but the decision lies with government, leaving the future of food security solely in their hands. Thank you for watching our stories here online and please subscribe below to become part of our YouTube community and be notified when we upload our latest content.